All right, so it was just a couple days ago that I made a video on this channel explaining to you guys how Joe Biden was heading on down to my home state here in Georgia to basically do this entire speech where he virtue signaled, pretended like he gave a shit about democracy, explaining how he wanted to do everything in his power to protect the right to vote while simultaneously demonstrating that he had absolutely zero plan whatsoever to get the members of his own party like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin to fall in line and stop protecting the filibuster so that they can actually actually pass voting rights legislation. And so because he had absolutely no plan to get them in line, we are left with the inevitable result of hitting an absolute brick wall, this time in the form of the neoliberal ghoul from Arizona, Kirsten Cinema. So I'm going to play for you guys this clip here uh, where she gives absolutely insane justifications for why she wants to protect the filibuster. But again, understand that this is coming with the context of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And we're going to get to a Kamala Harris clip here in a second, demonstrating that they have absolutely no plan to fix this current situation. So basically, Basically, uh, with this speech, we are, you know, dealing with the voting rights legislation that is completely dead in the water. So let's go ahead and hear from Kirsten Cinema. I strongly support those efforts to contest these laws in court and to invest significant resources into these states to better organize and stop efforts to restrict access at the ballot box. And I strongly support and will continue to vote for legislative responses to address these state laws, including the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act that the Senate is currently considering. I support these bills because they strengthen Americans' access to the ballot box, and they better ensure that Americans' votes are counted fairly. It is through elections that Americans make their voices heard, select their representatives, and guide the future of our countries and our community. These bills help treat the symptoms of the disease but they do not fully address the disease itself. And while I continue to support these bills, I will not support separate actions that worsen the underlying disease of division infecting our country. The debate over the Senate 60 vote threshold shines a light on our broader challenges. There's no need for me to restate my longstanding support for the 60 vote threshold to pass legislation. And there's no need for me to restate its role protecting our country from wild reversals in federal policy. It is a view I've held during my years serving in both the U.S. House and the Senate, and it is the view I continue to hold. It is the belief that I have shared many times in public settings and in private settings. Senators of both parties have offered ideas, including some that would earn my support to make this body more productive more deliberative, more responsive to Americans' needs, and a place of genuine debate about our country's pressing issues. And while this week's harried discussions about Senate rules are but a poor substitute for what I believe could have and should have been a thoughtful public debate at any time over the past year, such a discussion is still a worthy goal. Okay, so that's enough of that shit. All right, we're gonna get to another quote that she had down below this. But first of all, I absolutely fucking despise the way that politicians who are massively corrupt and know that they're corrupt feel the need to come out here and give grandstanding speeches like this as if they give a shit about anything that they are talking about. Kirsten Cinema does not give a shit about democracy at so many different levels that we could get into, right? And we're gonna get into a lot of those levels. But the first thing that stood out to me here, okay, she creates this like mythical reality wherein we're having these wild swings from the left and the right uh, every time somebody new takes power. When the fuck did that ever happen, okay? Ever since the at least the Reagan administration, okay, you'd have to go all the way back to the FDR administration to actually see a left-wing swing in the economic sense in that direction. But basically, since the Reagan administration, we've just been consistently moving with that exact same uh, neoliberal, austerity-minded uh, set of beliefs, basically, that has carried on from Republican to Democrat to Republican and back to Democrat. We've seen that very very consistently. So again, she's just completely making up this reality where there's some sort of an underlying disease of division infecting our country. The disease that is affecting our government and our country right now is not like division that is randomly happening amongst average Americans. The disease, the underlying disease that exists within our so-called democracy is corrupt motherfuckers like you, Kirsten Cinema. You are the disease. You are part of the swamp and the set of swamp creatures who are deciding legislation on behalf of corporate America and 
instead of on behalf of the overwhelming majority of Americans. And that brings me to my main point, is she thinks that she is preventing some sort of wild swings back and forth. No, you are preventing what the American people are united on, okay? This is what some people seem have seem to have a complete inability, especially in the mainstream media, to understand. And they continuously call people like Kirsten Cinema and people like Joe Manchin these moderates or these centrists, when the reality of the situation is being a centrist in the middle of the DC swamp is not the same as being a centrist amongst the American people. And relative to the beliefs of the American people, Kirsten Cinema is a far right extremist, okay? So that's the situation. She doesn't believe believe in representing her constituents. She doesn't believe in representing the overall uh, will of the American people. She's just fucking corrupt along with basically the entire rest of the Senate, okay? I could count on my hand the amount of senators who are not as corrupt as uh, Kirsten Cinema here. But just to remind you guys exactly how corrupt she is and how little she gives a shit about what the American people actually believe or some sort of a good faith debate on legislation, we just learned this back in September. And so this is outdated. So obviously this number has gone up, but big pharma and medical firms donated 700 and fifty thousand dollars nearly a million fucking dollars to kirsten cinema and then she opposed the drug bill that she initially ran in 2018 on supporting the idea of so again she doesn't care about democracy she's just corrupt she represents corporate america that's why she's doing this okay she doesn't want to get rid of the filibuster not because she doesn't want some wild swings back and forth but because she just wants us to keep marching to the right okay that's the reality of this and again we can get to multiple multiple different levels in terms of how she doesn't believe in democracy, let alone uh, how our entire political system in and of itself is undemocratic. So at the most fundamental level, listen, I'm a socialist, okay? And part of the reason why I identify as a socialist is specifically because I believe in democracy, not just in the political realm, but also in the economic realm. And so because of that, the natural extension of that belief is that I also believe it is impossible that uh, a, a capitalist system within the economy is going to be compatible with a sustainable uh, democratic political system. And we're seeing that play out right now as the vast majority of our politicians are completely beholden to the capitalist class in this country, okay? That's being demonstrated in real time by the existence of motherfuckers like Kirsten Cinema. okay? So that's number one. You can't say that you support the capitalist system and also pretend like you support democracy. You very clearly do not. On top of that, also, she takes direct bribes from the capitalist class, so she doesn't believe in democracy on that front. Another point that she doesn't believe in democracy on is she thinks that the Senate, in and of itself right now, in its current form, is somehow democratically representative of the the American people. Guys, the Senate in its founding, okay, go up, go look up the origin of how the Senate was founded. It was specifically founded with the explicit purpose of restraining democracy, okay? It was built as an institution to block democracy, okay? And how do I know that? Because right now you can look at the current situation. We have a 50 50 makeup in the Senate, right? 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans. Almost none of them actually represent the will of the American people, no matter which side of the aisle that they are standing on. They both support the capitalist system and the wealthy, uh, you know, wealthy capitalists within this country. They all support imperialism for the most part. So you have two different sides of this aisle that make up the 50-50 split in the Senate. Now, that 50-50 split in and of itself is not representative of the actual uh, uh, broad swath of the American people, okay? The 50 Democrats in the Senate represent over 42 million more Americans than the Republican half, okay? So even if you just had a 50-50 split in the Senate and you didn't have Kamala Harris as a tie-breaking vote, already taking votes along those lines would not be democratic because you have a tiny minority of Republicans who are representing much smaller states like Wyoming and South and North Dakota, etc. And they have the same exact power in the Senate to block legislation that the overwhelming majority of the country wants as somebody on the Democratic side who represents a state like California that represents millions of people would have to support that legislation. So the current nature and makeup, the, even the existence of the Senate in its current form is not democratic. It's not proportionate to the population. So it is not democratic in any way, shape, or form. But on top of that, you're not only saying we need a majority in an inherently undemocratic institution, but you're adding on a layer of saying not only do we need 51 votes in order to get something passed in a massively corrupted Senate, but we also need 60 votes. We need basically 10 Republicans to jump on board right now if we want anything passed. Are you fucking kidding me? This is not, you know, a, a, this is not anything other than a tyranny of the extreme minority of wealthy white men in this country, essentially. That is the system that Kirsten Cinema is protecting by protecting the uh, filibuster. Again, a relic of the Jim Crow era. Think about the context of all of this. Kirsten Cinema is literally using the filibuster, okay, pretending as if it's some, like, you know, grand aspect of our institutions that is protecting 
protected civil liberties and rights. It never has. It has always been weaponized for perverse angles. But the 60 vote threshold, the filibuster, not only is it inherently undemocratic, but it was specifically used during the civil rights movement to filibuster and block the civil rights legislation that was being proposed at the time. And Kirsten Cinema is turning around right now as we are trying to carve out a very specific narrow section of the filibuster in order to pass specifically voting rights legislation. And she is still opposed to that. So she is doing basically the exact same goddamn shit as Southern conservatives were back during the civil rights movement. Okay. Understand that context and how absolutely demonic this shit is from Kirsten Cinema. She is just nothing but an absolute ghoul. And again, this isn't the only time that we have seen her corruption and uh, you know, lack of belief to say the least in democracy. We also saw this with the $15 minimum wage. And I think this is kind of relevant because it's pretty much analogous to the current situation, right? If you guys remember when she did that cutesy little thumbs down on the $15 minimum wage, her justification was the same as what she's saying right now, because you have that inherent contradiction. She's saying she does support the $15 minimum wage, but then she appeals to some rules that, you know, are archaic uh, Senate procedures like the Senate parliamentarian. She appeals to those and says, oh, that's why I can't possibly support that. It's like, no, you're just corrupt and you don't believe in a $15 minimum wage. The same exact thing applies to right now with voting rights legislation in the filibuster, okay? She's saying she supports the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, and she's saying that she supports the Freedom to Vote Act, while literally simultaneously saying, I'm not willing to take any of the steps necessary to get those pieces of legislation passed. So she is directly contradicting herself in this clip by saying she supports the legislation while blocking any efforts to actually do that. And so that's Kirsten Cinema. okay? So we know where she stands. We know where Joe Manchin stands. They're not going to move unless you absolutely pummel them into the ground and force them to move, okay? You have to bend and break them in order to get in line as many previous successful presidents have done, like FDR and even like Lyndon B. Johnson, when they get out the fucking whipping stick and force these motherfuckers to fall in line with what the, what the rest of the party is trying to do. You cannot allow them to go unchecked making speeches like that. If you actually believed in the legislation, you would be going out and fighting for it. But instead, we are left with takes like uh, that recent Jen Psaki one coming out and saying that Biden's plan to get them on board is Biden wants to sign the legislation, so no plan whatsoever. He just expects it to magically show up on his desk one day. And then we also had this clip from yesterday that I wanted to play for you guys of Kamala Harris's newest strategy to get Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin to fall in line. So this is just absolutely unbearable. It's not just Republican opposition. It, it would seem as if this piece of legislation is going to come down to one or two uh, moderate Democrats. In months and weeks, the administration hasn't been able to convince one or two senators to come around. How are you going to do that in two or three days? If I may, I'd like to contextualize this conversation, sure. which is in 2006, in this very town of Washington, D.C., up the street at the United States Capitol, in the United States Senate, 98 of the 100 members of the United States Senate voted in favor of an extension of the Voting Rights Act. It was not a partisan issue. It was an American issue. But Madam Vice President, how are you going to get it done? Well, well, when we have the discussion about who's responsible, I will not absolve the 50 Republicans in the United States Senate from responsibility for upholding one of the most basic and important tenets of our democracy, which is free and fair elections and access to the ballot for all eligible voters. What about Senator? Okay, so that's it, all right? That's literally her plan, is we're going to let it fail and then blame Republicans, okay? So again, neither her nor Joe Biden have any coherent strategy whatsoever to get Kirsten Cinema or Joe Manchin to fall in line on this. They're just hoping it's magically going to happen one day or that they're gonna wake up and be like, you know, some noble Republicans that step in to save the day and vote for it, even though there's a filibuster. All of this is completely delusional and it gets you to the fundamental understanding that none of these motherfuckers, whether it's the establishment or the entirety of the Republican Party, Party, nor this establishment of the Democratic Party, neither of them care about democracy at a fundamental level, okay? You cannot do that and support a capitalist system. You cannot do that and support a filibuster. You cannot do that if you're not willing to go out there and pressure the members within your own party to fall in line with what the overwhelming majority of the country wants to do. You cannot say that you believe in democracy if you are accepting bribes from corporate America on a regular basis and then turning around and orienting your legislative agenda to to towards their uh, specified interests. So again, none of them believe in democracy at a fundamental level, and uh, we are basically left with voting rights legislation that is completely dead on arrival in the Senate, while Republicans continue to pass with simple majority votes in state legislatures around the country extreme restrictions on the right to vote.